please come over these boys gaping. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Oh, you can feed on me tonight if you'd like. Oh, yes, you can. See you tonight, you sweet, generous thing. Oh. Hello, everybody. James Stephanie Sterling here playing uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, not Diablo, because, well, fuck it. Today we are talking indeed about Baldur's Gate 3, an incredible achievement in game development. It is deep, rich, complex, feature packed, uh, tells an incredible story with incredible characters, plus it has tits and full pain. People are saying it's the new industry standard and that uh, all AAA developers out there should be afraid. Should they? Would they? Could they? Full pain? Let's find out. Also, Baldur's Gate 3 is making a shit ton of money without microtransactions, but we'll get into that too. Uh, now, if you'll fuck off, I'm going to let Astarian feed on me. Oh, how about that Baldur's Gate 3, huh? In my last video, I said that nothing of interest was happening in video game news lately, and to say that assessment offended a significant portion of the audience is putting it lightly. New York City! Get a rope. A stunning number of comments on last week's video expressed disbelief, incredulity, even a hint of offence. And my failure to consider the release of Baldur's Gate 3 a newsworthy item worth dedicating a 20 minute video to. Holy shit, it's not about Baldur's Gate 3. Come on, Steph, there's actual good news to report on. From the gaming industry, no less. Lyrian Studios creates a great game. Baldur's Gate 3 review is coming. Are you going to talk about Baldur's Gate 3? Steph, I'm wondering if you're going to touch upon the success of Baldur's Gate 3 and how the AAA industry is terrified we might consider it the new standard they have to match. Literally every other game critic. Hey, Baldur's Gate 3 is great with no microtransaction and it's a complete game. Stephanie Sterling, let's talk about this shit game getting taken down for copyright. Wait, no news! How about the fact that Larian Studios has knocked Baldur's Gate 3 out of the park, killing it with sales and has zero microtransactions? Surprised you aren't gushing over that? I'll admit, I was quite surprised that a game simply releasing and being good was considered so newsworthy that people expected an entire episode of this industry critique series dedicated to the thing with such fervour that not doing so was considered controversial. But by the same token, it's well known that I hate all video games and everyone who's ever played and liked them, so I'm sure you can understand the oversight. In all seriousness, it is the most damning indictment of the mainstream game industry you can get, it truly has reached a stage where a high profile game releasing as a full high quality product without additional monetization has become so very fucking anomalous that an entire video simply saying, yep, this is good, is warranted. So anyway, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 this weekend. At the time of writing the script, I honestly haven't made as much progress as I wanted to before talking about it. But last night, when I planned to play as much as possible, I instead got propositioned and subsequently fucked for like two and a half hours. Yes, I legitimately stopped playing Dungeons and Dragons to get laid. Like school bullies told me to do over 20 years ago, so who's laughing now, Lee Vicar? From English literature class? I got my brains railed out of me and you got five months for selling stolen radios at Dartford Market. Who's laughing? now! What? No, shut up, Craig, you've got unresolved trauma! But yeah, erotic delays aside, I have indeed been playing some of that Baldur's Gate 3 and... Yup. This is good. 
I'll admit, I generally don't follow Larian Studios' games very closely, not because they aren't good. On the contrary, they're by all accounts consistently fucking impressive. No, it's because my inattentive, memory-disordered, easily confused dummy brain really struggles with the level of management, minutia, and role-playing complexity soaked into their productions. Plus, they once told me on a live stream that I'd make a really good voice actor, but to date have failed to offer me so much as a single audition. Fuck's sake. I've played Divinity 2 before, and I'll give it all the credit in the world, it's astounding how much they put into it, but good lord I am too ADHD addled to play it properly. Which sucks, because I really love playing it right up until I'm physically sick from menu poisoning. Baldur's Gate 3, fortunately, proves far easier for me to follow since I used to play Dungeons & Dragons on the weekends a good few years back. And I was doing so when 5th edition first launched, 5th edition being what Baldur's Gate 3 is based on. I had a bard back in the day. Of course I had a bard, why wouldn't I have a bard? He was called Flynn Flashwood, and he abused the fuck out of Liamon's tiny heart to really aggravate our DM and his utter love of night ambushes. So yeah, the fact I'm familiar enough with D&D 5th edition has made Baldur's Gate 3 a lot easier to comprehend, and wow. Wow, they really did manage to make perhaps the most D&D feeling D&D video game ever, didn't they? I mean, it's no shadow of Miss Dara, but it's easily the second closest after that. With its wealth of options and wildly diverse outcomes, accurate implementation of practically every spell and ability D&D has to offer, and genuinely stunning sense of interactivity and reactivity to one's decisions, all tied together by an in-game narrator taking the role of DM, Baldur's Gate 3 does an unbelievable job of creating the illusion that its campaign is responding to the player dynamically and uniquely, utilising a dizzying amount of anticipatory content to make sure it's got a pre-baked response to any one of the many options someone might take. Also, I got to make my character a half-elf non-binary dick girl, because Baldur's Gate 3 lets you make a half-elf non-binary dick girl, and that fact alone makes it instant game of the year material. Oh, and my half-elf non-binary dick girl is a bard. Of course they're a bard. If there's one thing I love about being a half-elf non-binary dick girl, it's getting a bard on. 10 out of 10. It has a little something for everyone. The sheer scope of this game makes my fucking nose bleed. I can't even plan my own breakfast without feeling overwhelmed and paralyzed, let alone consider the vast number of ways a player could approach a problem with the dozens of spells, abilities, racial traits, and class skills at their disposal. I'm currently writing for an upcoming video game. It's gonna be my first ever published narrative work and the first time I've ever had to write dialogue trees. And let me tell you, Simply planning one conversation with variable outcomes was hard to wrap my bloody head around, and after months on the project, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it all. And I'm dealing with pretty rudimentary dialogue trees. When you consider that Baldur's Gate 3, as fucking extra as it is, has fully voiced its hundreds of NPCs, as well as given every fucking player action its own unique audiovisual effects, just... just... Uh, uh. Oh god, the nosebleed started again. It's a lot. And it's exciting. I've not been this excited by the wealth of possibilities in a mainstream game for such a fucking long time. And that's before we get into how well written and performed the characters are. I mean, I sort of just want Gale to hold me and talk to me about his cat. And then there's Asturian. Just... God damn. Oh. <laughs> I'm flattered. Who knew you had such taste? Oh, I gotta admit, y'all folks in the comments were right. Any glibness on my part regarding dedicating a video to this game is soon betrayed by an astonishment at its quality that I cannot hide. And those are longing for more videos praising games like this have pretty understandable desires. I mean, as much as I've kept this show from being as dark and depressing as it used to be, it's still a show predominantly focused on critiquing an industry that just fucking sucks. An abusive, exploitative, unethical, and underhanded industry that I've watched to disfigure, distort, and dismantle. An entire artistic medium while reporting on every new disgusting low sunk to for over a decade. Of course people want to see a video that just says, yup, this is good, when something like Baldur's Gate 3 happens. I mean, even the last game we dedicated a positive episode entirely to, Street Fighter 6, had to balance the praise with criticism for its despicable litany of microtransactions and Battle Pass bullshit, all the predatory garbage I've spent my career futilely railing against. At last, here's a game that, at least in this regard, can be applauded without caveat. For indeed, Baldur's Gate 3 is antithetical to what the modern game industry has standardised for so-called AAA video games. Baldur's Gate 3 is a lengthy, content-packed, finished, 
product. It's not a glorified early access game with a roadmap of promised content that might never happen. It's not a live service that follows in the footsteps of the same handful of loot em ups that just get copied over and over again. It's not a threadbare minimum viable product designed to make money first and provide entertainment very distantly second. Baldur's Gate 3 also does the thing that so-called AAA publishers have said is impossible nowadays. It's just making and selling a video game like a maker and seller of video games should. It's not selling a Trojan horse of psychologically manipulative in-app purchases. It's not selling you the opportunity to buy more bullshit. It doesn't have a goddamn fucking battle pass, and that alone makes it bloody refreshing compared to most of the shit on the market these days. And crucially, that game's making fucking money, y'all. So much for the idea that games of this nature don't make cash without those all-important in-app purchases. And it's $60. It cost 60 Ameriquids at a time in history when most publishers have settled into the grossly normalised new price point of $70 for their unfinished, unremarkable, unimpressive games that still have the fucking cheek to charge for microtransactions and DLC and content passes on top of it. At 60 buckaroonies, Baldur's Gate 3 offers more variety, more hours, more fucking stuff than half a dozen of the past few years of semi-baked $70 games put together. And that's not even hyperbole. That's the sweetest plum. It's just true. It's just fucking true. The Activisions, the Ubisofts, the EAs of the world, they used a new console generation as a flimsy fucking excuse to start charging $70, not because they were offering more bang for those bucks, not because their profit rolling asses needed the money, not because anything about their products had improved, but simply because they felt fucking entitled to it. It all belongs to me, everything that I see. I'm stingy and it's mine. They felt entitled to an extra 10 bucks for the same rushed, skeletal products they've always squirted out. And I truly do not think I'm exaggerating when I say that you could pick six of these 70 buck services and struggle to match half the content Baldur's Gate 3 has. More importantly, Baldur's Gate's content is like storylines and character building and wildly versatile playstyles, shit like that, not just nebulous capital C content TM. Larian's take on Faerun isn't just a barren open map full of copy-pasted bandit camps that have the same objectives to complete over and over. No, do you know what happens when you visit any given camp in Baldur's Gate 3? I don't, because literally anything can happen. I fucking went to a goblin camp and I chased chickens. That's what I fucking did. Brilliant. Baldur's Gate 3 isn't just impressive, it's overwhelmingly immediately impressive. Just making my character, just making my perky titted half elf bard and slapping my choice of three dicks on him, I was impressed right away at how close to the tabletop game my options were, not the penis thing. All the spells, all the skills, all the stuff from the rulebook was there, implemented correctly. Just wow. It almost makes you wonder, doesn't it, when Stephanie's gonna drop the penny? Just makes you start to get a creeping sensation that somewhere, somehow, that bitch Sterling is gonna spoil the party. Well, breathe a sigh of relief because nope, I actually have no negative points this week. No notes, no sourness, no regrets. Thank God for me. Lol, only joking, get your brollies out, you parading fucks, because I'm about to rain on all you sorry dickheads. So, as someone who has reported on crunch in the industry before, as someone who has talked about the unsustainability of extravagant productions with bloated budgets, as someone who's talked about the importance of not overworking developers and not overstuffing games, I gotta say that as much as I'm fucking adoring Baldur's Gate 3, I can't help but feel that little etch at the back of my brain questioning exactly how much human effort went into all of this, how much money, how much investment, how much of people's lives went into this. This game isn't just big, it's deep. Deeper than my fist went when I got laid last night instead of playing Baldur's Gate 3 like I meant to. And let me tell you, that's deep. Now, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. In many ways, this game is an example of, say, using early access right, making use of pre-established technology right. But what has gone into this game can never be underestimated. And it is far, 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 far from 
easy to make what Larian made. From the detailed animations to the bespoke spell effects to the voice lines to the intricate map design, Larian Studios put so much into that game and I don't think it's entirely unfair to worry about the potential toll that could take on the people, on the studio, perhaps on the industry. Baldur's Gate 3 is being celebrated by many as the new industry standard. A game raiser and a tone setter that represents the minimum level of depth and quality a game must have. But with that expectation comes the risk of placing unsustainable demand on studios. I just think that's a concern worth considering. I bring this up because I'm not alone in this consideration and I gotta say, the way people have gone after those expressing it is, well, disturbing to say the least. One game developer currently in the crosshairs is Zalavia Nelson Jr whose resume includes such cult hits as Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator and Hypnospace Outlaw. He raised what I think are worthwhile points when talking about Baldur's Gate 3 being an industry standard, saying, you can't separate a game from the process used to build it, before listing what Larian had going for it. A dev cycle stretching back to 2017, a 400 plus team across seven worldwide offices, massively successful early access periods, and goddamn Dungeons and Dragons for a license. Along with lots of of other advantages. Larian is coming into this game swinging with a gigantic weight of expectation to deal with, but they're also doing it with an immense amount of wind at their backs, Nelson explained. In an era of mega games, Baldur's Gate 3 is one of the largest attempted, built by a specialised group of people using mature tech specially built to make this specific game, reinforced by invaluable mass player feedback and market validation ahead of its launch. This is not a new baseline for RPGs, this is an anomaly. Trying to do the same thing in the same way, especially without the same advantages, could kill an entire group of studios. We are in an industry dangling elephants over cliffs, pointing at the ones that don't collapse under their own weight as indictments to the ones that do. Basically, while it would be great if every game were like Baldur's Gate 3, there's a reason why it's being treated as such a phenomenal experience, and it's because the game's very existence is, well, a phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. As Nelson put it, it's an anomaly, and expecting every RPG to have the depth, the wealth of stuff that Baldur's Gate 3 has is to expect something that very few studios could even begin to attempt to let alone sustain. Even if you have the money, you've got the experience, the expertise, the technology to think about, and let's not forget the fucking money. I do not think this is an unfair thing to politely ask the community to keep in mind. A large sector of the community, however, did. I won't focus too specifically on the people who have set about twisting the words of Nelson or, say, folks like Josh Sawyer who backed him up. A few bad actors have really shit-stirred and effectively glorified concepts like crunch as they did it while accusing the gentle concerns offered as defending microtransactions or attacking Baldur's Gate 3. Because as usual, everything has to turn into a fucking culture war. Over at IGN, Nelson's statements were misrepresented as developers panicking over the industry standards Larian have set. Quite tellingly, the devs under attack have almost all been characterised by their critics as AAA developers worried about being held to a higher standard. Why shouldn't some AAA developers raise their own standards? When in actuality, a lot of them are indies who don't actually have a horse in the race outside of a desire to see the game industry in a healthy and sustainable place based on their own experiences and expertise. I mean, I think it's fairly reasonable to assume that developers talking about development know what they're talking about when they're talking about development. I mean, not all of them, some developers pick shit thick. But for the most part, devs know how to dev. And if they're politely raising concerns, is it not worth hearing them out? The swiftness with which an incredibly gentle and non-combative perspective has been twisted into an attack on Baldur's Gate 3 has been fucking incredible, really. One of the most egregious mountains I've ever seen a molehill reconstitute it into as far as the game industry goes and lord fucking knows I've seen some peaks. It surprises me on some level, although it shouldn't. One comment made by a developer had to be deleted because one presumes of the harassment that fucking happens whenever someone dares question common consensus in this community, but it made a point that I think should be understood by anybody who's ever been a fan of this show. You cannot simultaneously be appalled by how much big games cost to make 
and hold such expensive money sinks up as a standard by which all others shall be judged. You can't get annoyed when dickhead companies like Square Enix keep saying they're gonna focus less on mid-tier games and put all their resources into huge blockbusters in desperate bids for excessive profit, while at the same time being annoyed that not every game is like Baldur's Gate 3. This show has criticised the absurdly inflated budgets of games for years. I mean, if you just Google Sonic Inflation you'd see some of the severe examples that I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm honestly disturbed at how quickly previously uncontroversial criticisms of the industry are suddenly treated as fucking crimes against decency whenever they get applied to games people like. Then again, that's always the way, isn't it? I'm utterly amazed at Baldur's Gate 3. I'm glad it exists, really I am. I'm eager to finish this script because as soon as I'm done writing, I am going right back to playing more of it. But let me tell you this, if it ever came down to it and I had to make the choice, I'd burn Baldur's Gate 3 out of fucking existence if it meant developers didn't have to break their backs crunching to make more games like it. I would make that choice without a second fucking thought. I said it about Grand Theft Auto, I said it about The Witcher 3, no game, no matter how much I love it, is worth the people making them hurting themselves. One hopes that given the way BG3 was made, crunch wasn't required, but I guarantee you that if major publishers did start trying to match its quality, they would happily sacrifice the health of their developers to do it. Let's not be like them. There's a quote by one of my favourite people in the industry, Lilith aka Botster of Bloodborne PSX fame. Yeah. She has a meme that regularly blows up with good reason, and it goes like this. I want shorter games with worse graphics made by people who are paid more to work less, and I'm not kidding. And yep. Yep, I want that too. Not kidding. That doesn't mean I don't want to see games like Baldur's Gate 3. I cannot stress enough because I fucking know how I'll be taken out of context, that I bloody adore what Larian did. But then I think of my favourite fucking game of this year, Bone Razor Minions. A game with simple but delightful graphics made by a very small studio with its royalty-free soundtrack, capable of arresting my attention for hours and hours and hours. Now I don't think there's an excuse for the unfinished fucking shit that passes for a AAA game these days, but there's this embarrassingly bug-riddled, duct-taped messes are no longer forgivable by any standard let alone the high ones set by Baldur's Gate 3. Companies with vast wealths of hoarded resources like EA and Ubisoft should actually quite rightly feel humiliated by how much Larian Studios has shown them up for the charlatans and purveyors of chaff that they are. But the perfect storm of resources and circumstances that went into the making of Baldur's Gate 3 are just that, a perfect storm the lightning of which cannot simply be bottled and produced on a whim. As far as I can tell, that's really all people are saying when they're sharing sentiments of caution around calling the game a new industry standard. In one regard, it absolutely is a standard. The highest standard. The new bar of aspiration that should serve as inspiration, bardic or otherwise. But it cannot be the lowest bar, the minimum standard. It simply ain't happening. And that is why Baldur's Gate 3 is so special, is it not? If anyone could do it, when it wouldn't be special at all. I don't want most of the triple A garbage we get. It's overcharging, underproduced shit. I also don't want every game studio killing itself trying to replicate what Larian made. In between phenomenal successes like Baldur's Gate 3, which I do want more of, I want something far more sustainable as connective tissue. I want shorter games, with worse graphics, made by people who are paid more, to work less, and I'm not kidding. It's the extra poo that makes all the difference. Who wants another drink? Oh shit, um, fuck, uh... Fuck, I forgot to do promotiony things. Uh, there's a sale going on on our merch store, thegymporium.com. Uh, also, next weekend, August 19th, I'll be in Preston Flag Market, uh, right in the centre of town outdoors, um, defending the PCW women's title. Uh, and that's free to attend and just turn up and look at it. Um, sh I think that's it. Fuck. I forgot to do this bit. It's okay. I can't reiterate enough, because, again, I do not want to be taken out of context on this shit, that, yeah... I think a lot of AAA studios should be looking at Baldur's Gate 3 and thinking, yes, 
yes, it would be nice if we could do that. And just because it is an almost impossibly high bar, that doesn't mean that developers shouldn't reach for it. Plus, if we are talking about companies like Activision Blizzard, like Electronic Arts companies that, that rake in vast sums of money, uh, constantly po boasting of record revenue, constantly uh, 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 profiting and giving millions to its executives, uh, there is no excuse for them, at least when it comes to having the money to put into that kind of production value. Uh, yes, there are lessons to learn from Baldur's Gate 3. Yes, uh, there are standards to take from it. And yes, uh, if you are making huge big budget games for multi-billion dollar corporations, maybe there isn't an excuse to churn out utter shit. Now, like I said, I'm not expecting every single game to be like Baldur's Gate 3, but I don't want any games like, say, what was it called? Redfall? Redfall! I've forgotten its fucking name already. I don't want games published by big publishers coming out like Redfall. There's no fucking excuse. And I said this of, of Elden Ring uh, last year. Uh, you get these massive open world games that have nothing but copy-pasted objectives. Uh, uh, you know, Take out this bandit camp, take out this bandit camp, take out this bandit camp. Um, and no, no, I want an open world that is uh, diverse, that's got a, a ton of variety in it. I don't care about the square footage of an open world map. I care about the fun that I can have in it. Uh, and again, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is something to look at in that regard. I have been playing that game now constantly. I've put in, fuck, I must be close to like 20 hours or something now. Like nowhere near as much as, as one uh, needs to see everything. Um, but I don't think I've done anything samey. Every location, every dungeon, every town, every character is a new experience. And that's something I want. That creatively is a standard. Uh, regardless of budget and, and development, in terms of creativity and originality, yes, let's look at Baldur's Gate 3, but let's not attack people for advising pretty salient caution. And in a way, I get it. You know, the, the, the geeks and the noids out there have waited ages for a game like this, and they're doubtless protective. They don't want their parade rained on, but don't spoil it. You've got a nice thing. Can we not associate it with attacks and harassment and twisting of words and misrepresentation? Just enjoy it. You won. This is a win. Celebrate. Don't go looking for things online to get pissed off at. Anyway, Baldur's Gate 3, 7 out of 10. Thank God for me.